It's your hump day. Hump day, yeah! High Noon, Atlanta Radio Show. For the entrepreneurs to the small business owners and nonprofit organizations, hang out for their opportunity to be on the ledge. Now, let's welcome your host, Carl Callender. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. This is a spot where everybody comes to feed their mind, body, and soul. Thank you for tuning in. You're on the ledge, and I am Carl. We have a great show for you today. I have an amazing person here. Her name is Alicia Harvey with Distinct Tax Consulting Group, and um, she's going to bless us with some information for entrepreneurs and a little bit on, you know, on the W-2 side, but for entrepreneurs to understand how to do their taxes, <laughs> really, I wanted to say you need a tax professional. That's that's why she's here. <laughs> she's here to promote herself and her business, and she's very good at what she does. How you doing, Alicia? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I want you to uh, let everybody know um, pretty much what you do and uh, how you got started. Sure. So I formed Distinct Tax and Notary back in 2013. Um, as I evolved and the different clients that I, I ended up getting, um, we had to trans, transfer our focus into more of the consulting um, to focus more on our businesses. Um, but I started, man, back in 2000, probably about 10 maybe. You saw, um, so you've been doing this for a while. Right, right. So that's that's probably around the time, if I'm not mistaken, when I started. Um, but it, it, it started way before then. My mother used to do taxes. Um, And just watching her, um, you know, do the taxes during tax season. She's just Mm -hmm. really busy. The paper's all over the place. And I love numbers. So it it, it intrigued me at that time. Um, You got to be a math person. Right, right. So you have to be you have to be really good with math, but you also have to be really good with research Um, and kind of a little bit more on the skepticism side. Uh, you, you, you just can't just say, okay, yeah, that looks good. Right. And whatever the client gives you, you can't just say, okay, yes, let me, that's fine. Whatever. Right. You have to have some type of curiosity. Um, because if not, then you'll be fooled every time. Yeah, and that's the liability is on us. The, you know, the liability is on you guys. Right. Right. So the liability is on us in terms of accepting whatever you get. Right. Us. Right. But once the form is filed, the liability is on you. Right. Definitely. But to have that professional in your corner. That's what you need. Got to have that so. professional. Now, what I wanted you to do is let everyone know it, how to reach you, how, how to get in touch with you, your sure. social media. If you, you, I'm pretty sure you are on social media because I think that's how we connect it. Right. It is. It is. So social media is the biggest thing. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all have distinct tags in them. Once you type distinct tags, we pop up. Uh there are some variations because there have been people who tried to start an account or whatnot. Okay. Um, but you could also email me at Alicia at distinct tax. And that's a L Y S H a, um, at distinct tax.com. Okay. Um, and our office is right now located in Morrow, okay. Georgia. That's about 15 minutes South of Atlanta. Okay. Now do you have a brick and mortar or do you have, I do. Okay. Yes. What's your address? It is 1115 Mount Zion road, um, suite 14, um, in Morrow, Georgia. Okay. And yep. what's, what's your hours of operation? So that's interesting. Yes. So during tax season, so that's January until April, we are open six to seven days a week. And the seventh day is Sunday if we have an appointment only. Okay. Um, and that would be um, 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. And that's January through April. Um, May through November, Tuesday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on in December, uh, it's by appointment only. That's a lot. It hopefully, is. hopefully it's y'all all on got the website. That. But all the, uh, yeah, go the to the website yeah. and get all that information. What I wanted to do that I did not do at the beginning of the show, I want to open up the lines for anyone that wants to call in. The number is going to be 404-603-8770. Once again, the number to call in is 404-603-8770. Okay, Alicia. Now, um, let's let's talk a little bit about your your background here. Sure. Um, talk about a little bit about your upbringing. You know where you were born and everything like that. Whatever college that you went to, and if you're a part of a, a sorority, I'm, I'm throwing that out. There. I'm giving, giving it a ring. Yeah, sororities. <laughs> oh, that's there's more than one. Okay, yes. I'm gonna let you go. 
Okay, so uh, to start it off, born in Merced, California, uh, military brat. My father was in the Air Force, so we traveled to Italy and whatnot. Um, because my grandmother was here in the Atlanta area, Stone Mountain to be exact, uh, we moved this way. Okay. Um, then she remarried, um, and so we we really laid our roots down in Lithonia, Georgia, where I went to Martin Luther King Junior High School. Okay. I was in the band there. Um, played snare drum, tenor drum, all the percussion instruments that you can think of. But my uh, my main drum was tenor drum. Okay. So I left there, graduated, went to Savannah State University. Savannah State. Of course, right. and I was in the band there as well. Um, I pledged uh, Tau Beta Sigma National Honorary Band Sorority. Um, that is the sister organization to um, Kappa Kappa Psi. And what, what, what's, tell me a little about Kappa Kappa Psi. So what Kappa Kappa Psi is, that's a, that's a national band fraternity. Okay. But a lot of people know them through Drumline. They were on Drumline? They were, yeah. Wow. So uh, there was a lot of my frat brothers that were on there, and they were stepping and whatnot that you may have seen. Um, then after I um, joined Tau Beta Sigma, I joined uh, Delta Sigma Theta. Um, sorority Incorporated. Uh-oh, Delta. So. <laughs> Delta in the house, Delta. <laughs> of course, of course, no other way. Um, so, and then after I graduated from Savannah State, I went and um, started working at a small CPA firm. Um, and then I decided, well, you know, I, I, I want something more. So I went and um, received my master's degree from Southern Polytechnic State University. Okay. Um, from then, I was the last graduating class. It was merged with Kennesaw State. Wow. Right. So oh, you're a historian now. <laughs> of course. Right. Have to make a difference. Um, so then after I after I earned my my master's degree, I decided, well, I want to I want to change. I want to do something different. So I started auditing and worked for another CPA firm. Um, then decided, OK, the traveling thing is not for me. Bought my house. And, okay. you know, I felt like I was just throwing away money because I was never home. Right. right? right. So. Um, then I decided to go back to the CPA firm that I started with. Um, and then from there, uh, my husband, well, at then, at that time we were just dating. So he proposed in 2015, we got married in 2016, but he got injured, right? How, how, how did that happen? Playing basketball. Oh, okay. Playing basketball, tore the ACL MCL meniscus. Wow. Yeah. So he was down from November 2016 until I think about February and March of 2017, right in the heat of tax season, right? Right. So, um, crazy thing was we just got married in that September of 2016. He got injured in August of mm-hmm. 2016, one month um, before the wedding, right? Wow. So, we already took vacation, everything like that. So, I had to go back to the company and said, hey, I need more vacation. And what was their answer? So, at that time, they said, oh, well... We can give you two weeks. I said, well, he needs me for eight. So, of course, at that time, I started making my moves. There you go. Um, started making my moves into doing it full time. Right. Because remember, I said I started in 2013. Um, so I started making my moves. And, you know, when you start talking to God and you start praying and you and you put your faith into him, things start to come start, alive. Start Stuff's, to move. Right. And everything starts moving. Right. So January 2017 was the first year that I started really promoting myself. I mean, I've been doing it for a while, and it started with a friend asking for help. Right. But um, so I started pushing it next to, you know, while I'm focused on my business, I'm trying to work in my business and work at work. It did not work. Right. right? And and take care of her husband, too. Right. And take care of, right, and take care of husband, right? So that didn't work. My work started showing, and it, it, it was obvious. Um, at least to me, maybe to some of my coworkers, it may not have been my supervisor. It was obvious. Mm -hmm. Um, so then of course they let me go in May of 2017. So then I got, I started driving home and I called my husband and I said, um, I just got fired. And he said, what? I was like, yeah, yeah, I did. And what was the reason for, for doing that? They said it wasn't a good fit. Huh? There was, there was no really explanation, but I already knew what it was. So, um, so from there, I, I called my husband. I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to go find another job. I'm going to push this full time. Nice. You know, f- friends and family have been pushing me. God's been sending me different signs because I said my last day at this job will be December 31st of 2017. But God had a different plan and said, no, May 31st of 2017, your life will change. And I'll never nice. forget that day. Right. So um, once all that happened, then 
I mean, everything started falling into place, not worrying about money, not having to worry about a lot of different things that you, that a lot of people say, when you start a business, money is the the ultimate factor. If you don't have it, how can you build? Correct. And at that time I had no worries. And I, I thought it was crazy when other entrepreneurs said, you know, I wasn't worried about money. And I'm sitting here before that even happened. I said, what do you mean you're not worried about money? Right. You know, so um, after all that, then um, received, uh, you know, messages and, and confirmations um, from friends, family and whatnot. And you know, started moving, right. started having consultations and, and doing it full time. I mean, it's a blessing. Right. And I would I would never go back to a nine to five it, unless it's mine. Unless it's yours. Unless right. it's mine. Unless right. you're building the business and you're going to have other people working for you right. to grow the business. Uh, that's a very deep story right there. And what we're going to do, we have to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to indulge a little bit more on entrepreneurs entrepreneurship side of what you're going through and we're going to talk a little bit about the taxes for entrepreneurs uh schedule c uh, 1099 versus a w-2 you're on the ledge on a real 1100 you just got that great new job you just started your business you just started your medical practice now you need insurance how can you protect yourself You should call Carl Callender from In the Black Firm, LLC. Carl specializes in living benefits insurance, paycheck protection, and more. Call today at 770-765-5151. Group and individual plans are available. That's Carl Callender from In the Black Firm, LLC. Hi there, healthy people. Do you have a healthy product or service? If you are a certified medical professional, fitness trainer, author, or chef, Old Fashioned Health would love to promote your services or product on the Old Fashioned Health radio show. Please reach out to us. Call 404-793-3960 or email us at oldfashionedhealth at gmail.com. You can also contact us at oldfashionedhealth.com. Old Fashioned Health, good health inside and out. Okay, guys, we are back. We are back. We had a little tech technical difficulties that we're trying to work on right now, but we'll go ahead and continue our conversation with Felicia Harvey at with the Stink Tax Consulting Group. Let's talk a little bit more about the entrepreneurship side that you had to endure as far as being laid off of work and kind of sort of you was pushed out into this arena. Right. Yeah. And um it it was scary at first, and and it's so funny. It was scary for maybe an hour, mm-hmm. and that was the hour to drive home. Yeah. And once I got home, it was over with. I made a few phone calls, ended up getting a a, a client just like that. Right. So there was just no like worries. That. No worries. No worries. Now let's talk about your support system. Um, of course, your husband, but uh, can you name a couple of people that make sure that you stay upright and, and and keep you moving on a daily basis? Oh, yes, yes. So, of course, um, my closest family, that's mother, father, sister. Uh, I have a lot of different cousins um, that, that really keep me grounded, uh, whether it's, you know, talking to them, texting them. Um, I have sorority sisters and line sisters that I talk to weekly talk to monthly Mm -hmm. um and it's funny that my my sorority sister my line sisters um for tabata sigma every last one of us own a business nice every last one of us and that's all over the united states yeah well no all of us are actually in georgia all of okay well that's that's better (laughs) yeah so um it's it's a blessing and then to you know to see everyone growing everyone moving in the right direction and knowing that um you know not to to knock a nine to five job right. because that's how we all start. But to know that there's more to life than a nine to five, right? There's more to life. Um, I can't tell you, um, you know, how much time that I, not that I have a lot of time, but how much more time I have to give to family and friends on top of at least making enough money to survive. Uh, yes. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense because let yeah. me tell you something. The nine to five is is the the platform, and once you're able to experience that and know that you want more out of life, then that will actually springboard you into entrepreneurship if 
You don't have that word called fear. Right, the if, fear. The fear that, factor. That will stop you every time. Every time. Um, you, can't, you can't allow fear to stop you from doing anything. Just because your parents did it or your grandparents did it and they said, this is the way that you need to move, this is the way you need to go. And just because that seems to be the norm, it doesn't mean that it's technically right. Right, right. Especially, you know? especially when you have that burning desire inside your stomach that you want more. Right. Uh, and, and it's in there. You, it's, it's like spiritual warfare. Exactly. You have, and, you know, not to get too religious, but the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit tells you. It, it moves you. It tells you, um, you know, that it's time to move. It's time to go on to greater things or do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, fear is what stops a lot of people. And I'll give you one example. I have a client out of North Carolina, mm-hmm. a very close friend and a sorority sister. And she started working at her job. And when I tell you, her story is, it's marvelous in my opinion. It's really marvelous. But um, she she was a director at a college. Okay. And started doing um, lashes and, and, you know, installing those lashes or whatnot. And she's probably going to call me and say, okay, Alicia, you know what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so she started doing the lash, exten- lash extensions. Um, from there, you know, she was making good money. And I said, girl, go ahead, do it full time. Her sister's telling her, do it full time. And, you know, we're sitting there just pushing her, pushing her. But the fear was there. Right. But once she let fear go, she jumped and she's doing amazing things now. Okay. And she's, you know? she's still in North Carolina, right? She's still in North Carolina and still in business. And nice. that's that's the plan, to stay in business. Once you get in business, to stay in business. Right. But you can't stay in business by doing it by yourself. As much as all of us want to sit here and say, oh, I did this all by myself, that's a lie. That's not true. No. I, I can't sit here and say I built my brand by myself. Right. I have a branding company. I have um, I have my lawyers. I have my um, prayer warriors. I have my, my support system. Yes. And, of course, now getting to employees. You know, so it's it's good things to have in place, and you never build alone. You never build alone. Well, that is a great story. That is a great story. One thing that I wanted to make sure uh, that we touch on, because now we we want to get on your skill set now. Okay. So we're going to talk about taxes for entrepreneurs. Um, let's talk about. Let's just give a quick example, and I want you to explain a W two compared to a Schedule C and a ten ninety nine. Okay, sure. So a W-2 um, is normally what you get when you work for someone else. When you are an employee and they can technically control the behaviors you have on a job. So a W-2, they take the taxes out first, then you get paid last. Right? That's a key point right there. That's key. Um, 1099s, those are like your, your subcontractors where the employer or what you would consider a vendor um, does not control your behaviors. And okay. you are paid first, you pay your taxes last. Right. And that's that's pretty much, and we're going to put that in the category of uh, like Uber, Uber drivers. Right, Uber Lyft drivers, drivers, Lyft, um, they're 1099s. Right. So, of course, you know, the record keeping is important, it's vital. Right. Um, in terms of mileage and um, your, your car repairs. Right. Uh, the insurance. Right. You know, a lot of them are using their cell phones, so keeping, keeping track of that. Mm-hmm. That, that's definitely key. Now, Schedule C. Right. So, Schedule C. <clears throat> so, if you are a 1099, normally if you have expenses, your 1099 is reported on a Schedule C. Okay. If you are a single member LLC, you are a Schedule C. If you're a sole proprietor, you're a Schedule C. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, to get a little bit more complicated, if you're married, and I never recommend this because it, it can get a little tricky. Okay. But if you are married and you own an LLC together jointly, you can file as a Schedule C. Okay? And you can right. file as a joint venture. I don't recommend it because if you were to get divorced, now we have to go and dig up some documents and figure out what's going on. Ah, yeah, and that's complicated. It gets, it gets very complicated, right? Um, when Especially when you own a business with a spouse. Right. And everything is together. Not to say that we shouldn't be together. Right. You know, in terms of everything that we have and we're as one, but in terms of business. And we have to look at all of the options that could happen, all the different situations and scenarios that could happen and transpire. Okay. We need to take that in consideration and not be naive to that. Right. When we're talking of tax planning, tax strategy. 
we have to keep all of that in mind. Okay, understood. Now, why is it so significant that an entrepreneur, let's say a small business owner, um, a nonprofit organization, or a startup needs a person with tax professional experience and not trying to do it on their own? So that's important. Um, so, of course, one thing, anyone can prepare taxes. Mm -hmm. You can. You know, I, I can't. But, I'm, I mean, I'm a licensed enrolled agent through the IRS. So I can prepare taxes, but I also have a license. There could be someone working, you know, out of, I don't know, say Atlanta anywhere. They can just go and get a, a brick and mortar and say, oh, I have a tax firm. They don't have to have a license or anything to prepare your taxes. I didn't know that. Yes. So a lot of people don't know that. They think just because they're registered with the state, they have a federal um, EIN, and they think, oh, well, they're legit. That's not always the case. What What can you, if, if you're ever in that situation, if anyone's out there in that, in that situation or ever been in that situation, what what questions can they ask that individual? To... Oh, you can, you can always ask, um, can I see your license? You know, are you, do you have any certifications? Um, and a lot of people go out there and say, oh, I'm a certified tax coach. There's no such thing. That's there's there's no <laughs> such thing as a certified tax anything. You have certified um, public accountants, which are CPAs. Right. Um, and then you have your enrolled agents and then you have your tax attorneys. Those are the three people that can represent you before the IRS. Alicia is schooling y'all right now. Hopefully y'all are taking some very good notes here. This is good information. Now, I have another question here. So what are maybe some of the pitfalls that um, small business owners run into when they're um, having their taxes prepared? Is there anything that they need to be looking for or just in case they can help out that tax person to just yes. make sure that they don't get audited? So, um, so that's a two-part question there. Uh, the first one is, um, what can you do when beforehand to one minimize your tax bill in terms of like paying me, and then of course minimizing your tax liability that you have to pay to the IRS or you have to pay to the states that you operate in. Um, your record keeping, your bookkeeping, that is vital. If you don't have that, what are you proving? Right. So say, for example, you do get audited and they say, OK, I want to see your documentation. Majority of business owners, especially in Atlanta, I don't know what it is. They don't have record keeping. Someone told them, oh, no, your bank statement is enough. That is not true. That Yeah, trust that me. That is that's, not that's true. That's not true. You need all of your receipts. Yes. Every last one. I tell all of my clients, save your receipts. You know, Dropbox is free. There's, I believe, one drive is free. I don't know if Box is free. Yeah. Um, but there's so many different um, avenues out there where you can save your information in a secure location. Right. So, like, an example, my clients, they have a client portal you can upload all year long. Mm -hmm. And you can save your receipts there. It's not going to be deleted. But a lot of them don't take advantage of that. That is free space for you. Right. You know what I mean? So, um the record keeping is vital. Yeah. If if you don't have your receipts, if you don't have your your financial statements, um, I always recommend QuickBooks. That's what I use. Okay. Um, it's the easiest thing, and it's it's easy to transfer between me and the client to log in and um, for them to understand what is going on instead of using a different software there where it's foreign to them. Right. Um, but now, in order to not get audited, that's not a guarantee. Right. No one can guarantee you that you will never be audited. That, An audit is supposed to be what we call, quote unquote, random. Right. But it's not random if they keep picking on you from year to year. Right. right. Um, there, but, are, there are some red flags that the IRS do see that pick that that right. piques their interest and say, let's look a little further. Right. So there's there's plenty of there's several there's hundreds of red flags. Um, one is um, having a loss from year to year, continuous losses. And at that point, you could be considered a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, if you're itemizing for people who may not have a business, they may be individuals that donate a lot or have a lot of houses or whatnot. Um, and not to get into all the nitty gritty and all the tax law changes that just happened, but especially going forward, if you are itemizing, mm -hmm. you are more than likely to get audited. 
but make sure that that documentation you have right is key it's very key um a lot of people may think oh well someone said i could deduct this i can do this i can do that that's not true now a lot of that is not true until you talk with a tax professional right um I, I don't recommend you going off of what Google may have told you. Another business owner may have told you. Um, I've seen different um, business owners that have been in business for 20, 30 years and still don't know what all is tax deductible. So that's that is not, that's need, not your that's niche. That's why they need you. Right, right. That's not your niche. You focus on what you produce and what whatever consulting you do, right. whatever product that you're you're selling. You concentrate on that. Let me concentrate on what I do. There we go. You know, there so, we go. Um, I wish everyone would would understand that. <laughs> no, well, they un- they should understand it today. Now, before we go, I want you to give everybody your information one more time so they know how to reach you. Sure. So uh, you can actually call the office. The number is 770-742-9136. You can email me at alicia at distinctax.com. That is A-L-Y-S-H-A at distinctax.com. The website is distinctax.com. And we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I want to thank you so much for coming in. I've been enlightened. So I hope everybody else that's listening has been enlightened. I have my son here and um, he's getting some good information. He got some good information two weeks in a row. So um, (laughs) uh, he's learning and, uh, and growing at the same time. And I want to thank everyone that tuned in today on the ledge. And thank you very much. And you are on the Real 1100 AM. Thank you. And boom, there it is. Thank you for listening to On the Ledge with Carl Callender. Don't fall off. Be sure to come back next week. See you then.